Question, Lord Moylan. Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, as at December 2023, there were nine women serving an IPP sentence and 33 prisoners serving a detention for public protection sentence who are in custody having never been released on licence. The IPP Action Plan aims to promote sentence progression for all those serving the IPP sentence and provisions in the Victims and Prisoners Bill will give more offenders the opportunity to have their sentences terminated so that they can move on with their lives. My Lords, I congratulate the Government on um, having achieved some reduction in these numbers over the last two years, although I think noble Lords will in some cases still be surprised that there are women uh, who are serving IPP sentences who have never been released and that there are people who served, who committed their crime under the age of 18 who have never been released. The majority of the latter are now 10 years or more over their tariff. Uh, in that light, could my noble friend say, um, would, would my noble friend agree with me perhaps, that while it's perfectly reasonable to have a parole board public protection test for prisoners serving a definitive sentence, because at some point they will be released into the community at the end of their sentence. It's less appropriate in the case of um, IPP prisoners because the alternative for them uh, is remaining in custody indefinitely, um, potentially for decades more. Um, would my noble friend agree that, that perhaps this test uh, advanced in the current bill should be modified somewhat for IPP prisoners? IPP Action Plan, uh, which the Government has promulgated, remains the best vehicle to deliver support to all IPP and DPP prisoners so that they pro can progress towards a safe release, safe, my Lords, uh, for them and for the community into which they will be released. Uh, the IPP Action Plan continue, uh, provides continued focus on supporting those serving uh, IPP and DPP sentences in both the custody and the community, ensuring that each has an effective sentence plan tailored to their individual needs uh, by supporting those on, in the community on licence to comply with their conditions. I'm delighted to follow my noble Lord Moylan in his crusade for justice for these prisoners. Well, Lords, the Government reject resentencing of DPPs and IPCs, as the Minister knows, arguing that the Parole Board has consistently knocked back these prisoners, so therefore they should just lay in prison and rot in prison. But the former head of the Parole Board itself Martin Jones, now the Chief Inspector of Probation, is one of many, many experts calling for the resentencing to end the right nightmare and injustice of imprisonment without end. So what's the government's real reason for rejecting resentencing? Is it because they don't want to be seen to be soft on crime ahead of a general election? No, my Lords, it's not the case that uh, the government uh, is acting out of that, um, that reason. Uh, the position on resentencing has been rejected twice by the government uh, at, at different times. Uh, the government uh, instead um, takes the view that uh, as there is a public protection aspect to these sentences, it is apt uh, that they be continued to be treated in the current way. I, I reject the noble lord's proposition that people are being left to rot in prison. Uh, my Lords, uh, the action plan has achieved the extension of the scope of psychology services so that they can continue to support some of the more complex IPP cases. Uh, the safety team in HMPPS has developed and issued a safety toolkit concentrating upon the needs of IPP prisoners. Uh, and the uh, HMPPS has also commissioned new IPP delivery plans for rollout in May 2024. My Lords, the Government is not inactive in this area. My Lords. Thank you. Um, my Lords, these uh, 33 DPPs that uh, referred to by the Noble Lord, the Minister, are 33 people who have never had a shot uh, at adult life in the community. They are all well past their original tariff, as, as the Lord Mo uh, Moylan says, and passing one's tariff date is a time when mental health often drops off a cliff edge. Wouldn't the Minister agree that uh, we should give them the same kind of wraparound care that Section 117 prisoners get, 
holistic and multidisciplinary to help them get through the gate uh, and out into supported life in the community. My Lord's provision of just such multidisciplinary approaches is precisely what the government uh, is accomplishing in its approach uh, to these people. I fully accept the noble lady's considered point that uh, persons in such a position where they have not experienced freedom uh, will suffer uh, extreme and acute uh, mental health difficulties uh, from time to time. Uh, with that in mind, my lords, I, I can advise the House that the Government remains committed to improving outcomes for individuals with mental health needs, including such IPP prisoners. Uh, the IPP safety team has devised a dedicated safety briefing. Uh, there has been a special IPP toolkit issued uh, to concentrate the attention of uh, persons dealing with such prisoners across the level of the prison system uh, to concentrate upon their needs. Uh, and uh, there is also, my lords, a, a national partnership agreement on health and social care in England published in 2023, setting out a shared priority work plan to deliver safe, decent and effective care, improving health outcomes for people in prison and on probation. But uh, to conclude, my lords, I, I congratulate the noble lady and my noble friend uh, and all noble lords uh, on their concern uh, for this often overlooked group of prisoners. My lords, my lords, my lords, my lords um, I recently in Lincoln Prison met uh, a man who's been continuously in the prison system for the last 48 years since I sat my A-levels. And um, he, is, um, he is not mentally ill in, in, in any obvious way. Um, he did tell me that he keeps saying by keeping God between himself and the other prisoners. That was the gist of what he said anyway. Um, but he did say to me that um, he is so socialised by, by being in prison for so long, he's forgotten almost what he was in there for. And if he were to be released, he was asking, could there be specialist units in nursing homes where there would actually be the proper care for someone who has not known freedom in, in his entire adult life? My Lords, the Right Reverend Prelate's example uh, will strike a chord uh, with uh, noble lords across the House uh, and engage um, noble lords' sympathy. Um, the <clears throat> work which the government is carrying out to establish um, psychology services is, as I said, uh, multidisciplinary in nature uh, and involves uh, not only uh, expert psychologists uh, but also dedicated probation officers, specialists in their field. Um, those who have looked at uh, the problems of suicide in prison, uh, we're working in particular with a group called UnGrip, and a, uh, Mrs Donna Mooney, who has done great work in this field. Uh, we are also engaged with uh, the Howard League uh, for Penal Reform, and in relation to persons coming out of the prison estate, um, there is a, a commitment to working with the Samaritans organisation to provide further assistance for them. My Lord, has, ha, does the government not feel ashamed at the obvious injustice of the continuing 16,000 former IPP residents in prison who are still on IPP sentences? This is a gross injustice that lingers on people's lives who are not able, in a place of permanent panic, to get on with their day-to-day -day existence because they look over their shoulders wondering whether they'll be tapped for a recall. In the last 10 years, when I visited 73 prisons up and down the UK, and I've met hundreds of IPP people inside prison, I've not encountered a single one who is not worthy of release tomorrow. The system is so badly broken, it needs a post office kind of approach, which clears out the residue of this long injustice sentence, which was described as a great evil by two former Home Secretaries. <clears throat> My Lords, uh, numbers of IPP prisoners uh, are um, down to 1,312 as at the 30th of June 2023 uh, from a maximum of uh, 6,000. Uh, I hear the noble lord's views um, on the worthiness of release of those um, whom he has met, uh, but it is not something which can be consigned to an individual but is a matter uh, for consideration by uh, persons holding a, a wide range of uh, specialisms and experience. Uh, my lords, uh, as to the government's shame for its response, uh, I do not uh, share the view that uh, the government should be ashamed of its response. Uh, the latest uh, review by the uh, Inspectorate, by the, uh, His Majesty's Prisons and Probation Service Inspectorate, uh, has found that uh, 
HMPPS is taking proportionate and necessary decisions to recall offenders on an IPP licence for public protection. My Lords, my Lords, uh, to be clear, the Labour Party does not support the resentencing of IPP uh, prisoners. Uh, our view is that would put the resentencing judges in an impossible situation when there had been recent multiple reviews of those IPP sent, uh, prisoners. Nevertheless, my Lords, the, what the Government constantly tell us is there is a review, a review of the sentencing plans for those IPP prisoners. Can the noble Lord the Minister tell us how many of the IPP prisoners have had their sentencing plans reviewed? Well, Lords, I, I can't provide the noble Lord with that information just directly, but I will be able to do so in a very short space of time. Uh, but I gratefully acknowledge uh, the statement which he gave on behalf of his party uh, in relation to the uh, approach. Uh, which has been proposed of resentencing such offenders, uh, and his views are one of those of His Majesty's government. My Lord.